Let's welcome Archbishop Benson Idahosa. Archbishop Benson Idahosa. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Father, we are in your presence. Unveil your glory. Reveal your power. Demonstrate your grace. Because the Lion of Judah has prevailed. Now we are more than conquerors. Through him who loved us. Bless your people tonight. Glorify your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 When I was here a few years ago, I taught a chorus. Tonight I want to teach you one. You must have known it, but still sing it with me. Hallelujah. Jesus lives. Hallelujah. Jesus lives. He lives in you and he lives in me. Hallelujah. Jesus lives. Hallelujah. Jesus lives. Hallelujah. Jesus lives. He lives in you and he lives in me. Hallelujah. Jesus lives. Hallelujah. Jesus lives. Hallelujah. Jesus lives. He lives in you and he lives in me. Hallelujah. Jesus lives. Hallelujah. Jesus lives. Hallelujah. Jesus lives. He lives in you. And he lives in me. Hallelujah. Jesus lives. No more sorrow. Jesus lives. No more sorrow. Jesus lives. He lives in you. And he lives in me. Hallelujah. Jesus lives. No more dying. Jesus lives. No more dying. Jesus lives, ha. he lives in you, and he lives in me, hallelujah, glory, glory, oh glory, glory, Jesus lives, oh glory, glory, Jesus lives, he lives in you, and he lives in me, hallelujah, Jesus lives, no more dying, Jesus lives. No more dying, Jesus lives. Yes, he lives in you, and he lives in me. Hallelujah, Jesus lives. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Sing it with us. Hallelujah, Jesus lives. He lives in you, and he lives in me. Hallelujah, Jesus lives. Oh, glory, glory. Rejoicing, Jesus lives. He lives in you, and He lives in me. Hallelujah! No more trouble. Come on, everybody! He lives in you, and He lives in me. Hallelujah! Jesus lives. Sing it, let me hear it. Let me see how fast you are.
joy to it. This is a, this is a bragging song. This is a song you brag with. Oh, Lord. The first, the first time we sang it in Benin Convention. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands. They began to brag on the devil. Everybody sing it in their own version. Provided you make a nonsense of the devil with it. You can blow your gag, 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 whatever you want to do. You can shout as you are shouting with it. It's a good thing to know that Jesus lives. That he lives in you and he lives in me hallelujah jesus lives. hallelujah what happened now hallelujah Seated. This is going to be our convention song throughout. And I'm believing God that throughout the whole week, God's power will back you up. The Spirit of the Lord God will raise you up. The power of Almighty God will support you. And you will sing a new song in Jesus' name. Amen. 
When you sing it tomorrow, I want to see you bragging with your handkerchief. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3. I want to speak on the subject. His power for my ideas. Every dream that I have every vision that he's given me his power to fulfill it as I travel around the world I find that many Christians have ideas they have dreams they have expectation the only problem is how to bring it to fusion tonight we want to discover how to use his power to fulfill my ideas my need in life you wouldn't believe this the day I read God is the spirit they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth for God Seek a search to worship him. God is the spirit. Then one day I found out in John chapter 1 verse 16 look at what it says there. Of his fullness have we all received the cup capacity of God is available for my inabilities. Then I read one day, as he is in heaven, so am I in this world. Then I read one day, First John chapter 4, he has given me of his spirit. Everything I ever lacked, we are in him then the Bible says in him we live move I have our being so where does sickness come from if I'm in him sickness cannot enter him if I'm in him poverty cannot enter him by the grace of God I want to deal on the subject tomorrow financial power how to receive spiritual power and financial power. Many Christians have Holy Ghost, but they don't have holy money. In the ministry today, no matter how anointed you are, if there's no cash in your hand, that poverty will ruin your anointing. If Jesus were here today, he would say, go into all the world. Preach the gospel. Hold some money in your pocket. Because money is an answer, not a question. Money is a defense. Wisdom is a defense. And money answered all things. Money doesn't ask questions. If you say to money, I came to Uganda on an economy ticket, I'm going by first class. If I, if I came here on an economy ticket, and I say money, I'm going on first class. He doesn't say why. He just said, yes, sir. If you say money, I have one coat. I want it to become ten. He doesn't say why. He said, I'm ready, sir. If you are tired of eating grass, you can start to eat chicken. Money doesn't say why. Money is an answer, not a question. If you don't like trekking, you can start driving. And anytime you are tired of poverty, you can start to preach prosperity. 
it costs God more to save you than to bless you. It, it, it costs God more to save you than to bless you. And let me tell you what, what I mean. For God to save you, Jesus went to the cross. For God to bless you, he said, let there be. God doesn't need to die to bless you. He doesn't need to go to the cross to bless you. He said the silver is mine. The gold is mine. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. If God owns everything, why are his children suffering? We will solve the problem tomorrow. I was the chairman of, of Poverty Association. I was the chairman and managing director of Have Nothing. I was enjoying poverty so much that poor people called me poor. You didn't hear what I said. I was so poor. Poor people called me poor. They see me, they say, poor people will see me and say, that poor man. And one day God said, it's not my fault. I have nothing to add to Jesus. For he that has Christ has everything. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I never knew that those scriptures were covenants. I thought they were good story. I never knew I could do every, all things until I started doing few things. This night we are going to go into some of them. Of his fullness. Say that everybody. Talk boldly. Talk with power. Have I received he that has Christ has everything. Let me give you an example. This woman, she was once missed somebody. She missed the man and met me. She became my wife. From the day she entered my house, all her bills, I pay. I pay. I pay. I pay. I pay. She was only told, you are going to Uganda. How to go and what to go with, she didn't ask questions. She just followed. The other two sons that came with me, stand up. How much did you pay to come? What did you pay to come? What did you pay to come? What do you pay to eat? What do you pay to sleep? What do you pay to come to this meeting? Maybe, maybe because my color is, is God's color. Let's see this. Let, let us see what this man of God did. Dr. Ruth, stand up. How much did you pay to come? You didn't pay anything. Are you with this man? Do you understand what I'm saying? And I listen to what the Bible says. If ye been evil, know how to do good how much more will your heavenly father do the bible says with God all this 25 years ago after preaching for 12 years I discovered what it meant to say with God when I preached for the first 12 years, I was with myself. 
I was suffering for God. Now I'm living for God. I'm no more suffering for Christ. No. It's cheaper to live for God than to suffer for God. It's cheaper to live for God. I hear some missionaries from Africa. They are suffering for Christ. some missionaries who miss the road say, I'm suffering for Christ. You are suffering because you have not met Christ. Because in Him there is no suffering. The Bible says God is a good God. Where will you get suffering from when He is? Jesus says, finish. If you finish, where do you pick your suffering? He that has Christ has life. He that has Christ has everything. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? I so, I'm so glad. I'm with God. My wife is so glad. She's with me. My sons are so glad. They are with me. Bishop Reed is so glad with his wife. They are with me. Mrs. Reed is so glad she's with her husband. And I'm so glad I'm with God. I hope you understand what I'm analyzing. If you are suffering, you are suffering because of ignorant. My people perish for lack of knowledge. And this week, we are going to show, I will so deal with your poverty that he will not know your house anymore. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 3. <sighs> Are you there? Verse 16. That he will grant you Oyana Kuanga. According to his riches in glory. Listen to what Paul is saying. He said, I want God to grant you his riches in glory. Now, there's what we call grant in English. It's given to you not because you are the owner. And Paul said, I'm going to tell God for you to give you what, you what is not your own. God grant you according to his riches and glory. Every time you make, do you know that every time you say God, you are talking of immeasurable power. You are talking of capacity beyond human reckoning. Whenever you say Almighty God, you are talking of the man who has the whole world in the palm of When you say Jehovah, you are talking of incomprehensible power. That is the man you are now with. Paul said, I'm going to tell him to grant you according to his riches in glory, according to his riches in glory, according to his riches in glory, to, his in glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man because when you are strong inside you cannot be defeated outside somebody say hallelujah look at verse 17 that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith I can carry Jesus in my heart by faith. The Bible says of Jesus in John chapter 1. All things were made by him. By him all things consist. But Paul said that man who made the whole world. And by him all things consist. Can dwell in my heart 
by faith. So every time you see Ida Hosa walking on the street, there's something inside him. Jesus is inside him. Yes, so I and Jesus is inside you. That's why you cannot be defeated. That's why we are not afraid. That's why everything is under control. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Somebody say hallelujah. Now listen. Christ dwell in you by faith. That ye be rooted and grounded in love. May be able to comprehend with all sins what is the breadth of God, what is the length of God, what is the depth of God, what is the height of God. I can comprehend it. I can reason it. How do I reason that? I would think and think and think. When I'm shut and when I'm tired of thinking, I say, that's God. Whatever way I'm able to describe God, when I'm tired of description, I rest. Yet that is not God. It's part of Him. He's so big. But Paul said, one day, you will know his breath. You will know his length. You will know his depth. You will know his height. According to his riches in glory. Once you can comprehend a little ounce of God, for the rest of your life, you and sickness can never be friends anymore. Some of our members in the church used to be annoyed. They say, Papa, I was sick. You didn't visit me. I say, I'm ashamed. God asked you to heal the sick and you are sick. You are annoyed that I didn't visit you. How many times have you come to pray for me when I'm sick? We have the same God. Why should I make a slave out of you? Be a healer of the sick. Not be sick. Be a blesser of the poor. Don't be the poor person. So no member of our church is annoyed now when I don't visit them. I train every member to be a healer. Why should you be sick? When he bore your grief, he carried your sorrow. By his stripes, you are healed. Did you hear me? We'll be able to comprehend the breadth, the width, the depth, the height of God. He said, number one, Christ dwell in you. Number two, know his capacity. Listen to number three. Verse 18. You may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length of God. Verse 19. To know the love of Christ. We pass it man's knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. I can be filled with the fullness of God. Somebody say hallelujah. Me. Me. Christ incarnate can be inside my resurrected body. Then Paul said in, in, in Romans 8, 
If the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in your mortal body, he will quicken your mortal body. Then you don't talk like other people talk. When people say I'm sick, you say I'm well. When people say I'm poor, you say I remember he told me bless the poor. I'm the one he told to bless the poor. I'm the one he told to heal the sick. Open your Bible, don't close it here. Verse 19. Look at it. Look at 19. To know the love of Christ. He passes man knowledge. That ye might be filled. With all the fullness of God. Look at verse 20. Now. Everyone say now. Christians say that now. Say it one more time. Unto him. That is able to do. Exceeding abundantly above all that we may ask or think. Look at that scripture. Unto him, God is able. Say that. God is able. God is able. God is able to do to do exceeding abundantly above all that I ask or think I thought Naruza. I am a doer of my thinking until I found out my doing is a struggle. His doing is easy. How much can I ask? My Bible says God is able. How much can I think? My Bible says God is able. Able what? To do what I ask. To do what I think. Exceeding more than the word there exceeding me more than I ask. So if I can think of 20 miles, that's not all that God can do. He's able to do more than 20 miles. If I think of able to build a 20,000 sitting church, that's my thinking. It's less than what God can do. If I ask God, for 1,000 members in the choir. That is my asking. God can do it more than that. So his ability for my ideas. How much can you think? You think big? Bible says God can do bigger. You ask big? God can exceed your asking. When I found that that is what the Bible said, I stop asking God small things. Be patient with me tonight. Look at John chapter 13. Oh Lord God. John chapter 13. This is the scripture I read in Brazil last week, and they nearly killed me with love. My title was, He gave me power to do more than He did. He gave me power. Verse chapter 14. 
Verse 12. Verily, verily, I say to you, Robert. Robert. You didn't have mercy on me to say that. Also. All right, that's not Robert. Verily, truly, truly, I say to you. If you believe on me, Jesus, the work that I do, you start with that. Shall you do? Now we just call But greater works than these. Shall you do? Now we just call up. Shall you do? Because I have traveled to meet my father. The God and Father in you, God the Son in you, God the Holy Ghost in you, plus yourself equals to four of you. He gave me capacity to do more than what he did. I was praying that one day I'll be able to walk like Jesus. But it's a greater work than these. We are still struggling to do what he did. But he said, I permit you to do more than this. He raised every dead he found. He cleansed every leper he found. He blessed every poor he found. He lifted everybody who fell before him. You know these days. We know how pastor say I'm anointed. Pastor, how did you know you're anointed? Oh, people who came to my meeting, all of them fell down. What of those who attended Jesus' meeting? Everyone he met on the floor, he said to them, I say unto you, arise! You know, some of you in the church who doesn't know the work of the Holy Ghost, they give you, they give you the job of holding a big two years cloth. Sister, come. Brother, two of you, put your Bible down. Come. She's going to fall. All right? Get ready. That's your job. Your job is to catch her. Okay? Boom! Boom! Come on! Go! Come on! Go! Go! Quickly! Yeah, this is your job. Your calling is to hold this one. Read your Bible whether anybody fell and people catch him or people cover her. Kakati tuna mubaibuli. Ovanga mubaibuli omutu ya guanga yena. Bamu vakanga. Ovanga mbikanga kaka goyi. I say, brother, leave me, leave me. Take your hand away. Listen to me. What is your gift? I catch people. <laughs> What's your gift? I cover people. What is my gift? I kick them. You pick them. She covers them. Bloody nonsense. If anybody falls, let them fall. If anybody falls, then let them fall. God will raise them up again. It's not a gift for you to... What's your gift? I'm covering people who fell. What's your gift? I'm catching people who are falling. Go and look for another job. Go and find another job. Rise and shine. Everybody say, rise and shine. Say with me. Rise and shine. more than what he did. Put your hand in your chest. Say, with it, say it in English. Don't say it in Uganda. Say it in English. He has permitted me, has permitted me to do what he did. 
and do more than what he did. Look at your Bible. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. When you finish that, greater works than this. Jesus was only in three countries. Yes, I have been to 143 countries. I've gone, I've traveled more than Jesus did. But the good news is, I follow him behind everywhere. I, I thought you were going to clap your hand. I don't know you are bush before. I said, I thought you are going to clap your hand. He has permitted you to do the same thing. But he has given you power to do more. Somebody say hallelujah. How will I do more than he did? Look at verse 13. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. Whatsoever whatsoever you shall ask in my name that will I do that the father may be glorified in the son so when God does anything through you the father is glorified he said whatsoever what so you ask house I will do it why for a man who is not married I will do it 10,000 members for a man who have 550 people I will do it husband for a woman who wants to marry I will do it. Whatsoever you ask in my name, I will do it. Doing is harder than asking. I don't have power to do everything. But my mouth is wide enough to ask him. As long as I know I'm not going to do it, I can ask anything. I hope you are listening to me. I hope you are listening to me. When I was a pastor of 30 people, every Sunday I arranged seat for 500 people. I was the chief usher of my church. I was the choir master. When I got married, I have assistant choir master. Two of us sang together. Every Sunday, I go and arrange seat for 500 people for 30 members. I begin to shout. God is going to give you a miracle there. The 30 people here will look at the back. I say, who is he talking to? I was calling to be those things that be not as if they were. When it was only four of us in the choir, I would say, you people in Teno, sing it well. Those of you in, uh, in, in uh, Otto, sing it well. Bass, sing it well. Trevor, sing it well. The four of them will look at me. Who are you talking to? Now, we have the largest choir in the world. I asked for it. Don't be ashamed to ask. Because God will not disgrace you. If you ask anything in my name look at verse 14 if you shall ask anything in my name i will do it look at it look at look at the emphasis whatsoever limitless limitless anything conditionless 
atete chiri kwa kwa kulizo whatsoever chonda ka katonda house nyumba land taka children bana husband mwana wife mchala money sente whatsoever bulichintu chonda whatsoever bulichintu chonda you ask chosaba in my name mulinyali yangu i will do it yachikola anything in my name i will do it go back to Ephesians. his capacity for my inability he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that i ask or think how much can you ask? He's able to do yes, a seeding abundantly more than you ask. What of thinking? I think oh, I will finish that church in six months. All that God is asking is for you to think. I pray you will be delivered from sluggishness from what I'm saying. Now. I didn't know God can do it. 28 years ago, we started a small Bible school. Our Bible school used to last for two weeks. Only two subjects. Heal the sick. Cast out devil. Heal the sick. Cast out devil. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Next week. Heal the sick. Cast out devil. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. On Friday, you graduate. Go! Go! Heal the sick. Go! Raise the dead. Go! Cast out devil. In Jesus' name, you are graduated. Which it be? Finish. When the members began to increase, we turned it to three, three weeks, to one month, to three months, to six months, to one year. Now, it's a degree school. University. And now, we have started our own university. But how did we start? Two weeks. Which be as God provided ability, we buried our inability. We now have our own hospital. We have 74 schools with nearly 40,000 students, the largest private school in the world. It's our school. How? I thought of it. How? I asked of it. How? God did it. I found that my job was to ask. God's own was to do it. If he's the one to do it, what does it cost me to ask him? Nothing. He said, if I ask big, he will do it exceeding abundantly. Two simple English. Exceeding me more than. Abundantly means sufficiently more than enough. Two, two guarantees power that doesn't fail. Exceeding abundantly. So since that time, when my mate said, I wanted to build a church but no money, I said, how many do you want to build? We used to build one church in three years. We now build one church a week. We used to open one church in six months. Now we open one church a day. How? 
ask, I will do it. Exceeding abundantly more than you ask or think. What is in your brain? Ask with it. What's in your mind? Think about it. What is God's part? Do it for me. A Bible school that started with five students. It's now thousands of students we have graduated. 10,164. Our church that was seven adults and five children. Now millions of members. How? I ask. I think God did it exceeding abundantly more than I ask or think. When I became a pastor in our ministry, they paid me six, six dollars a month. After 10 years, they increased my salary to 10. Married with a son. I received that money for three months. They increased my salary when I came back from America to $50 a month. I was the highest paid preacher in Africa. I received it for three months. I went to Mombasa for crusade. Two o'clock in the morning, God woke me up. He said, from now, no more salary. I said, devil, I bind you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> He said, when you finish binding me, lose yourself. I said, I rebuke you. He said, I will not rebuke you. Devil can never tell you to give. I said, God, no salary. What am I going to do? They just promoted me to $50. He said, not only that from now, every money I give you, you'll be giving me nine out of ten. I said, oh, oh. <laughs> Nine out of ten. Give me that one hundred. One thousand uh, Uganda money. I say, you mean if I get one thousand, I should give you nine hundred? He said, if you trust me with ten, with nine, you and your children will not be able to finish one over ten. I said, God, you better listen to me. Please hear me. Let me talk to you. Every Christian is to pay one tenth. Why do you want me to pay nine over ten? He said, you are not like any other person. I give you ten, you give me nine. After the crusade, I went to Nigeria. I told my wife, our son was only four months old. She said, what did you say? I said, God said we should give him nine out of ten. He said, tell him to kill us. That's I said, you can tell him by yourself. I will not be able to say. She began to cry. I began to cry. About 2 o'clock in the morning, I left her room. I went to another room. I was crying. 
I said, God, our son is only four months old. Let me pay half. So you can take half. He said, no negotiation. You mean nine over ten? He said, if you do what I say, I will make you an example of prosperity. I say, how? He said, if I don't give you ten, you don't owe me nine. If I don't give you ten, you don't owe me nine. I rose up. I danced to my wife's room. I say, honey, no fight again, no war. No. God said, if he doesn't give us ten, we are not owing him nine. She said, she said amen. <laughs> Do you know for the first time in our marriage life, it was the first time in five years of our marriage we saved 200 pounds after we gave God nine over ten. And he said to me, your children will not be able to count your houses. Your children will not be able to count your cars if you will take nine over ten. Now, Give God nine over ten. If I say, driver, bring the car out. You say, which of them? It's able to do. A sitting. Abundantly. More. Than you ask or think. Our first small Bible school is now known all over the world. We who didn't have hospital before, our hospital is now one of the best Christian hospitals in Africa. Now we have started the first Christian university in the continent of Africa. How? It's able. To do a sitting abundantly more than you ask or think. I want to give you a job tonight. Go and look for Elizabeth. Go and find out what you need. Ask God. He said, I will do it more than you ask. I will do it exceeding abundantly more than you think. Go and think. Go and ask. What do you want? Ask God. Healing? More. Miracles? More. Houses? Exceeding. Abundantly, more than you ask or think. I used to think, how can I ask God for a big thing? Until I found that God is a big God. I used to think, how can I ask God anything? Until I found out He can do all things. When I found that arithmetic out, what I do now, I don't pray long ceremonious prayer. Oh, I have seen some young preacher when they want to cast that devil. In the name of Jesus, 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 Until I find out my yoke is easy. My body is light. Until I find out not by might, 
not by power, whatsoever you shall ask in my name, I will do it. Until I find out that my job is to lay hand and God's job is to do the healing. He taught me to say, you foul, tormenting spirit, I adjure you in the name of Jesus. Come out! Bam! Enter no more. I don't ask you how do you feel. Because I didn't pray feeling prayer. I pray the prayer of deliverance. Do you need anything in your life? Ask. Do you want to do anything for God? Ask. You want to build a big church? Ask. You want to establish a big business? Ask. Whatever you want to do in your life, God says, ask it, I will do it. Thank God for the life of Bishop Reed. My co-laborer, servant of the living God we found that there's no limit in Christ and we found that God is a provider 1975 May 24 God woke me up one night he said enter that tipper lorry I said me I have a car. He said, enter the tipper. He said, it has a tank at the back. I entered. He said, call tanker drivers in the town. I said, God, you know who you are talking to? This is the house. He said, he's the one I'm talking to. He said, go to the tanker garage, tell all the drivers to follow you. So I entered the tanker vehicle. I drove it to the tanker garage. I told all the tanker drivers in town. I said, go say all of you should follow me. Let's go. They respect me in my town. All the drivers line up about five miles. And God said, go to the Atlantic Ocean. Go there. And they all followed me in that dream. We arrived at the ocean. God said, come down. Take the nozzle of the of the tanker. Put it in the ocean. Fill your tanker. I feel my own. He said, tell the other driver. They feel their own. And over 1,000 tanker drivers, we fill all our tanks. And God said, look at the sea. Show me where you took the water. I looked and looked and looked and I was trying to find out how, where we took the water. I, I couldn't find it. Said, That's my power. Anything you take from me will never reduce me. So if you are going to ask me anything, don't ask me for small because you will never find out my secret. Ask me big things. I will do it for you. I will do it for you. Why do God want to bless his people? Because he told us to bless the poor. You cannot bless the poor if you are a poor man. Why did he ask you to heal the sick? 
Because he wants you to be well. You cannot heal a sick man when you are sick. Why did he ask you to clothe the naked? He wants to fill your wardrobe with clothes. Think the positive of the negative. Your standard as an answer, not a question. Ask anything in my name. I will do it abundantly more than you ask or think. Does anybody hear me? From now till tomorrow morning, sleep less. Sleep less. Don't sleep too much. Go and ask God the biggest thing you think you can ever ask. If you are a politician, Ask God for the biggest power in politics. If you have financial drive, ask God for the biggest figure you have in money. Ask it. He will do it. Not only do it, he will do it exceeding abundantly more. Say more. Than, than you, you ask, ask or think. Gaman ya jakun korera. No kusinga o. Zerwendo oza. Nibi nari musabiye. Nyodala. That's the day I, I stop doing small things. Everything you see me do in the ministry. Big. Chinene. Big hospital. Big schools, big churches, big universities, big choir, big Sunday school teachers, big everything. What? What? God is Almighty. Are you ready? All I want to do tonight. Shh. Stop there, stop there. Go back, go back. Shh. Go back. Go back. Look, look at his head like Masai. <laughs> I want God to give you the gift of asking. Some of you don't know how to ask. When I say rise up to pray, I see some people pray like this. <laughs> <laughs> What did you ask? Supposing my son, an intelligent man, three degrees, a medical student, he come from school, he come to college school fees, Son, I'm glad you are back. God bless you. Welcome. Welcome. What are you here for? What do you want?
that's how some of you pray. He said, ask. Supposing President Museveni. Singa President Museveni. He said, come. Pastor Robert, I heard all you are doing for Uganda. Come and tell me what your ministry <laughs> needs. No, give me the president. <laughs> You know what the security men will do? <laughs> they will open the door. <laughs> And send you out. He will say, I asked you to bring Pastor Robert. Why did you bring a crazy man? That's what some of you do when you say you are in the spirit. The Bible says you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost. I don't know a boxer who will go to the ring. And they say round one. Dr. Reed, ring the bell. I'm going to fight him. Ring oh, the bell. For the for the for the World heavyweight champion title fight. Laba, Omoran, sing, Abaruan, ring the bell. <laughs> ring the bell for us. Bagam, bagam. What round? Round one. If you cannot be stupid outside, why should you be stupid in the church? something big in my hand. She will come to my room. The best husband in the world. Oh, my darling husband. Oh, my sweetheart. She begins to worship me. The best of all husbands. If I come back the next war, I'm going to marry you again. After Jesus, you are the best thing that has happened to me. I know she wants to. Then I know she wants to ask me something big. Some of you don't know how to worship God. You just come see exactly. The Bible says, enter his court with praise. His presence with thanksgiving. Ask. He will do it. You are a child of God. Don't behave like a slave. There's nothing you need that your father doesn't have. Did you hear me? Go home tonight. You're not going to pray tonight. I just want to pronounce the gift on you. Are you hearing me?
When I told this man we want to build a cathedral at the university, he said we will build it together. We want to train 1,000 1, students a year, he said we will train them together. We want to build hospitals, he said we supply the medicine together. Everything I ever said we want to do, he said we will do it together. He's in England, I'm in Africa, we are around the world together. I said we are going to Uganda. He said when are we leaving? I want to put that gift in your life. Stand to your feet. I didn't say you should pray. Just keep quiet. I didn't ask you to pray. I just say, I want to pass the gift to you. Lift up your two hands. Not say anything. Because I'm sending you home to go and ask, think, and believe God. He will do it more than what you ask. Eternal Father, the thousands of your children here today. We've come to school to learn as we have been told. You have given us power to do what you did. You have permitted us to do more than that. Now, Lord, as your teachers, we've told your children, go home, ask, think, anything, God will do it. I throw the challenge to you who promised I will do it exceeding abundantly more than what they ask. Tonight, these hands that are lifted, I put the gift of asking and receiving in their hands. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Every disease, every obstacle, every hindrance, I command it Live in Jesus' name. From now till tomorrow morning. Ask exceedingly. Think exceedingly. God will do it abundantly. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now listen to me. If they ask you, what did the Archbishop teach? Say it this way. He taught me how to ask, think, that God will do it more than I ask or think. How far can you think? God will do more than it. How much can you ask? God will do it more than that. If that is true, don't ask God any small thing. Anymore. He's almighty God. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we ask or think in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Lord, I bless them with your power and your divine capacity. The gift of receiving and asking become their gift now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. amen. I say amen. amen. 
Bishop Reed preached this morning. He said, It's so easy. Miracle is so easy. Why? He's not the one that does it. How do I know? He's never done a miracle before. But he's following the God of miracles. And that God of miracles wants to use you from this day. Go and ask. Go and think. God will do it. Be seated. Do you understand tonight? I said, do you understand tonight? I want you to take an offering out. Take an offering out. Everybody. By this time tomorrow, we must have conducted the funeral service for poverty. He is very sick right now. Kakati Mazima Omsajo Yawabu Ari Kundiri. And by this time tomorrow, he is dead and buried. In Jesus' name. Hold money in your hand now. Now you have to start the Bible say. Those who are redeemed. It says, let the redeem of the Lord say so. How many of you are redeemed? I say, how many of you are redeemed? Say so. Say so. Say so. If you are redeemed, you say so. Don't over respect money. I said in Benin on Friday, those who honor money, it doesn't come to their house. People who own no money, he doesn't come to their house. People who steal from.